I sit down with Heather Downing to talk about idiots, or, well, rather IoT. Heather is using the Internet of Things to solve real world problems, and I pick her brain on crowds, drones, big trucks, and much more connected to the Internet. Warning includes silly attempts of connecting many things to the public internet. <laughs> we are here to talk about Azure, uh, in particular something to do with idiots, is that right? So, yes and no. <laughs> and no. Uh, the way that it goes is that I write a lot now for blogs and I write about IoT. Uh, but to someone who's not in technology, uh, like my mother, uh, when she looked over my shoulder as to what I was writing about, she said, how come you keep writing about idiots this whole time? And <laughs> Why are you writing about idiots? Right. I didn't understand what she was talking about. I said, no, it's IoT. She said, like, that's not what it, oh, I guess that's what it says. Because her brain just put a D, right? It just slid that right down in there because that's the way the human brain works when it sees a word it doesn't recognize, which happens to me all the time in Norway. I'm like, oh, that's, no, that's a Norwegian word. That is not yeah, English. Correct. But, mm. it, but it changes it ever mm. so often, so... Yes. That so was... what have you been doing with IoT? All the things. <laughs> all, the, all of the Internet of Things, you yes, mean? Yes, all of the Internet of Things. Most of the work that I got to do originally was a bunch of sensor data. So stuff like uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, which mm. actually was invented here in Scandinavia. In way. Sweden. Yes, it was. And um, I got to do a lot of work there, you know, with, uh, they actually did crowd control with it to see how many people were in a room. It was kind of interesting yeah. how they how they did that because every person had a phone mm -hmm. and it would just scan for different, uh, like the closest sensor point to it. Ah, right. So yeah, you yeah, could yeah. say, hey, there's roughly 30 people in this room. There's roughly that many. And so they could actually disperse crowds easier. That was my first experience with it. Yeah. And then since then it graduated to me playing around with drones, and then uh, moved on again to uh, doing work with sensors underneath trucks, like the really big semi trucks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, I'm from the Midwest in the U.S., and we are known as a pretty big crossroads for like agriculture and oil and all sorts of things. And so in the areas where there wasn't really any internet connection unless they put it there, mm. uh, they you had to kind of keep uh, tails on what the engine was doing and so the sensors would actually collect that data and then when they got to a point it would send the data up that blows my mind like it yes we can connect all the things and it creates a lot of data but should we like what is some of the crazy stuff maybe you've seen like how many hairbrushes have been connected to your toilet for example <laughs> oh man uh the craziest thing I've seen um where it did generate a lot of data but also it's just a little crazy and uh, sometimes you know, fair disclosure, we get excited about what is possible and not what we should do. Oh, yeah. uh, so yeah. in this instance, uh, this was a an airport that really wanted to help their clogging up of the all of the access ways because mm -hmm. people would stop and to look around and, and check their phone and figure out where they are and then not know where the gate is, even though there are signs everywhere. And so they, but they don't always know if people are just stopping to talk to someone on their phone or if they're truly lost. Yeah. So the way they wanted to track this is to give every person that walked into their airport a sensor um, in the form of like, it looked kind of like a key fob. Every person? Every, uh, even the children. Yep. Every single one. And they could just put it on a wrist, like kind of like what you would have it to a key to a pool or something, you know, just yeah, right, right, right on your wrist. And, and if you stopped based on the kind of time they think it should take for you to get to your gate, they would send someone specifically to you, the closest help person to you, with your information about your flight to get you exactly where you need to go. Unfortunately, it also tracked how long you went to the bathroom and, you know, how long you spent here, there, and everywhere. And all of a sudden, some of the uh, vendors in there were really interested in how long people were spending in the duty-free. Yeah. And it became an issue because nobody signed no. an agreement to be tracked while you were in your airport, even though... You did may have signed an agreement with your phone provider sure, sure. or like Google or someone like that. You didn't for this situation. So they had to pull that experiment out pretty quick because of GDPR. So the future is still bright for IoT, you reckon? Oh, it's very bright for IoT. Absolutely. Um, I think what we're going to see a lot more of now is certifications. So I think there's going to be a point where they ask, do you have a certified IoT person that's working that knows your compliance and understands what things need to be where? Yep. I think that'll happen a lot more, especially in um, more of the Far East. I think they're really interested in that as yeah, well, right. parts of Asia. 
uh, that'll probably be coming next. So I, I would just, even if you're not doing it all the time, even if yeah. you do mobile apps, look into it. I think just educating yourself on how to safely store things and what you should capture would be of benefit, I yeah. think. Oh, that's really cool. Thanks a lot, Heather. Appreciate taking the time. Thanks. Absolutely. High five only. Oh, even missed it. Ah. Yay. <laughs> Thank you.